Surah al ankabut Allah says, Does man think, do you think that it's sufficient for you to say we believe and you will not be tested? In fact, we have tested those before you as well in order to determine and distinguish who from amongst you are truthful and who are false in their claim. So, this is why if you were to take a careful look at Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 155, Allah says quite clearly, we will test all of you. You know, it's like a college. It reminds me of a college where, you know, someone in charge is telling you every week you're going to have a test. And every month you'll have a slightly more difficult test. And every year you're going to have a major examination. If you graduate, guess what? We're going to make it more difficult for you. Was it easy? No. I spent sleepless nights. I worked hard. I gave up my iPhone. Imagine, because I needed to study. I gave up my games, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, because I needed to study. Wallahi, the exams of Allah are far more important than those. The problem is, my brothers and sisters, in patience, we become impatient. You know what that means? We say, okay, I'm going to forgive. And after a while you say, Oh Allah, I'm still waiting. You are becoming impatient. That's why the hadith says, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَسْتَعْجِلْ Beautiful narration. When you make dua to Allah, you call out to Allah, Oh Allah, give me, Oh Allah, grant me. Allah says, we will give to all of you for as long as you are not impatient. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked a question, what is this impatience? What do you mean impatience? He says, for one of you to say, I called out and I called out and I called out, but Allah didn't answer. That means you became impatient. Allah knows. The Prophet ﷺ clearly says, get close to Allah during times of ease. The problem with us is we only get close to Allah during times of difficulty. Well, that's good. It's good. But there is something better. What is better? Times of ease. You have no problem right now. You have a job, you have a wife, you have a husband, you have children, you have a car, you have a house, you have a good salary, you have everything else, you have peace, you have serenity, you have... Get close to Allah now. When we backbite, we are sowing a seed of evil. That will grow a lot of evil that will come back to us. But when we fulfill prayer, when we are charitable, when we give that which is good, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're sowing a seed of goodness. It will grow in goodness and come back to us. You will notice many times in the Quran, many places, Allah links two things. He links what is called sabr with salah. So He says, Bear patience and establish your prayer. You have not been praying. Now you expect three days dedication, every problem will be resolved. That's not it. If you were not studying for so many years, suddenly you study for three days and you want to get a doctorate, a master's, whatever. It doesn't happen. It will come with hard work. Dedicate yourself. Perhaps, you know, fulfill it for a year and you see things start opening one after the other. Oh, I'm earning, my money is getting wasted. I don't understand. My brother, my sister, perhaps you are doing something prohibited. Perhaps you are engaged in haram. Your money is being wasted. There is no barakah, no blessing. My brothers and sisters, when you go through difficulty, sometimes you think it is bad for you, but Allah knows it is the best thing for you. I give you an example. People who have health problems, financial problems, family problems, any other issues that you have, you have an issue, you're trying to get married. You don't know if that marriage is actually going to work. I know of people who have fought to marry someone. They marry them, they have a child or two and there is a divorce. And then they say, I should never have fought for this. But you didn't know. Perhaps Allah created an obstacle in order to keep you away from it. Nuh alayhi salam told his people, I told them to seek the forgiveness of Allah, for indeed he is most forgiving. He will open the skies with beneficial rain as a result. And He will grant you wealth and children that you so desperately want. Amazing. Now, it is wrong for us to say, I am praying because I need money. I don't have money. Today we were taught, if you pray, you will have money. Or if you ask Allah's forgiveness, you will have money. So I am only seeking forgiveness to have money. The intention is wrong. Because that wealth, that sustenance, those children,
are a byproduct. Byproduct means you will seek the forgiveness of Allah because you are remorseful regarding what you've done. You will pray because you consider it an honor and an obligation unto Allah. And Allah says, as a result of that, your door will be opened and we will start providing for you slowly but surely. Going back to the verse, Allah says, Allah will test you with hunger. We started with fear and hunger and la lack of wealth or loss in produce or loss of life. All these things are mentioned in this verse. Then Allah says, give good news to those who are patient, those who bear sabr, those who are understanding the control that Allah has of entire creation. I was asked once, if Allah is so merciful, why do people die? The child asking me the question had a beautiful question. If Allah is so merciful, why do people die? Because to him, death is the end. So I said, my son, if you believe, you will realize that it's the mercy of Allah that actually makes us die. Allah does not allow you to taste pain beyond a certain point. And this is why if you are inflicted with some harm or you are hurt or injured, beyond the point it becomes numb. Beyond the point you become unconscious. And beyond the point you lose your life. Because Allah does not want you to feel pain beyond a certain point. And on top of that, my son, and I was talking to this young boy, I told him, I said, do you know what? When you have worked so hard throughout the year, what happens at the end of the year at your school? You have a prize giving. Would you love it if you were called up on the stage and you were given your prize? He said, obviously, I would love it. Is that not a big gift? Yes, it's a very big gift. I said, so Allah tells you that while you're on earth, we will test you again and again. Whoever passed those tests, we will call them up for the prize. I'm sure you've heard of a narration where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says there are seven categories of people who will be granted a special shade. The day that there will be no shade besides that shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sab'atun yudhilluhumullahu tahta dhilli arshihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluhu. And there are seven categories. What is that? Those are all prizes of those who endure they were patient, they were forbearant, they practiced restraint, they tried their best, they constantly sought the forgiveness of Allah. Allah will call them out on the day of judgment and Allah will say, you know what? You tried hard, we tested you. We tested you with the toughest of tests. But that's because we love you. The hadith says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a slave, he tests him, he tests her. If you have problems, my brothers and sisters, remember, I do too. He does too. Everyone else does too. Of a different nature. We have issues. We all deal with it differently. Depending on our closeness with our maker. People say sometimes, why? I'm a believer. Why do I have so many tests? Why do I have so many difficulties? Why do I have so many hardship? I can tell you why. Because you are in the school. You are in the exam room. You have undertaken that Allah is one. You have believed that Allah is one and you believe this is the messenger. Allah says, okay, come. You really believe? We're going to test you. So how will we test you? You believe Allah is the sustainer? You believe Allah is the curer? You believe Allah is the all wise, the all knowledgeable? You believe He is the Lord of the worlds? Okay. So when we make you sick or ill, may Allah grant us cure. Say, Amin. When we make you sick or ill, we want to see what you do. Will you employ methods that are against what we have taught? Or you will do that which is permissible. You go to the doctor, you may want to read some Quran, you may want to look after yourself. There is something called Mu'awwidat. Mu'awwidat meaning those chapters of the Quran, whereby if you were to read them, you would be protected from the devil and his progeny. You need to read them morning and evening. It is like medication. If you have high cholesterol and the doctor tells you, you need five milligrams of Crestor every single day. At this time, what will happen if you miss it? If you stop it, your cholesterol levels will go high. The same applies if Allah tells you to protect yourself from the devil, you need to read the last two surahs of the Quran or you need to include with it Ayatul Kursi, which is a verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. And if you don't do that, don't blame anyone when you become ill or sick. Remember this, it's a test from Allah. Allah swears an oath by time. 
Allah says, I swear by time that all mankind is at loss. All mankind is at loss except for those who believe and do good deeds and they encourage each other or they remind each other. They constantly remind each other regarding the truth and they constantly remind each other to bear patience. Wow. Wow. Subhanallah. Constantly, if I see you, you're in a difficult time, difficult situation. You are my perhaps son or daughter or spouse or whoever else you may be to me, just a normal person. It is my duty, if I'm a good believer, to tell you, don't worry. Everything will be okay. It's fine. It will be okay. Turn to Allah. Don't lose hope. Continue. We're all struggling. We're all going through challenges. Keep on going. Don't give up. Those words are so powerful, my brothers and sisters. Use them often. If you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way, He will sustain you just like He sustains the bird. He will look after you. Now, some people sit back and they relax and they say, Okay, Allah says He will look after me just like He looks after a bird. So let me just sit back and wait. I can be lazy, I can be anything, whatever is written for me will come. Wallahi, the hadith is not complete. The hadith says, meaning what we've spoken about so far, we still need to speak about the end of the hadith. It says, that bird leaves the nest with an empty belly in the morning. It goes out and comes back at the end of the day with a belly that is filled. Where it got its food from? The help of Allah. But it worked hard throughout the day. Many of us work very, very hard. We work hard. Allah will give you, Allah will provide. Keep on calling out to the owner of sustenance. The difficulty is sometimes the glamour of the world overtakes us in a way that we don't realize the owner of the money that we're looking for is actually the maker who made us. So when we get closer to him, we become wealthier people. Subhanallah. It's amazing how these 60 work. Now, this is not from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this division. This is just from our experience. We will notice that the first portion of your life, people of the previous generation are teaching you what life is all about. The middle of it, you are living your life. The end of it, you are busy teaching other people how to live the life. It goes to show you where Allah says, إِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when your Rabb told the angels, I am creating a khalifa on earth. What is the meaning of khalifa? One of the meanings is those who come one after the other. That is all one of the meanings of khalifa. That means I came, my parents taught me, I led a life, I teach my children, I leave, they lead their lives, they teach their children, they leave, and so on. It's amazing how this is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so I will face challenges. I was created in order to face the earth, and the earth is not simple, it is filled with obstacles. Just like if you were to enroll into a beautiful college that has a very high name in terms of education in your country, it's not going to be a walk in the park, subhanallah. It's going to be difficult. You need to be facing examination after examination and test upon test. And guess what? The more qualified you become, the more difficult the tests are. To get up early morning to read Salatul Fajr, subhanallah, it's not a joke. Get used to it. It becomes your habit. You will open your eye automatically at the time of salah because you're used to it. Your body has this computer that is amazing. Hey, that's a gift of Allah. But if you're a person who sleeps any time, any day, you're not worried about it, it's going to be really tough. You put one clock, two clocks, three clocks, and each one of them you press snooze, snooze, snooze. And still, when you snooze, you lose. So you've lost your salatul fajr. Allah says, Oh, you who believe. Seek assistance, seek help. Help regarding what? Your issues, your problems, whatever you have. The assistance you will get will be through two things, two major things, sabr and salah. Bear patience and I've explained to you the three aspects of it. And fulfill your prayer. Why fulfill your prayer? You develop your link with Allah. 
you develop your link with your maker. I tell you, the more patient you are regarding abstaining from prohibitions, the more sweetness you derive from this beautiful salah. Those, indeed those who are conscious of Allah, conscious of Allah meaning you fulfill the obligations as best as you can, you abstain from the prohibitions as best as you can, you seek the forgiveness of Allah as best as you can, that is the consciousness of Allah. Consciousness of Allah is to create a barrier between you and Allah's displeasure by fulfilling His commands and staying away from prohibitions. That is the consciousness of Allah. It is called taqwa Allah. So whoever is conscious of Allah, and bears patience, Allah will not waste the reward of those who do good. Imagine Allah calls them muhsineen. Allah says they are the ones who do good. Who is a good, who is a doer of good? A doer of good is a person who has taqwa and sabr. How do I know it? Because it is in this verse and it is in several other verses as well. Allah will not waste your reward. When you were patient, Allah will give.